YouTube channel and subscribe. Our order of worship today is praise, prayer, and preaching. Our pastor and resident theologian, Dr. Eric L. Winston Sr., will come and proclaim the word of God. Remember to give, and it shall be given unto you. We invite you to come by the church to drop up your tithes, gifts, and offerings, or mail them to 60 South Parkway East, Memphis, Tennessee, 38106, or you may go to our handle at Mount Zion Cash App. Our handle is lowercase, dollar sign, Mount Zion Memphis. That's dollar sign, M-T.
It is now time for our devotional. Our devotional scripture will come from the 38th number song, verses 1 through 11. O oh Lord, repeat me not in thy wrath, neither chastise me in thy heart displeasure. For thine arrow stick fast in me, and thy hand presseth me so. There is no soundness in my flesh because of thine anger. Neither is there any rest in my bones because of my sin. For my iniquities are gone over my head. As a heavy burden, they are too heavy for me. My wounds stink and are corrupt because of my foolishness. I am troubled. I am bowed down greatly. I go mourning all the day long. For my loins are filled with a loathsome disease, and there is no soundness in my flesh. I am feeble and sore broken. I am ruled by reason of the disquietness of my heart. Lord, all my desire is before thee, and my groaning is not hid from thee. My heart panted, my strength faileth me. As for the light of mine eyes, it also is gone from me. My lovers and my friends stand aloof from my soul, and my kinsmen stand afar off. Wow. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his word. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father in heaven, the God of our joy, the God of our salvation, author and finisher of our faith. God Almighty, the Almighty One, the Omniscient One, the Omnipotent One, the Omnipresent One, you say where two or three are gathered together in your name, you are there in the midst. And we are gathered this morning, Father, in your name, and we thank you for being in the midst of us. The choir just sang about the power of God. The Holy Ghost power. And we thank you for that power, Father. Yes. Yes. We thank you for the power, the dunamis power, Father. Yes. The all power. Yes. Father, we come to your throne of grace this morning with our heads and humble hearts. We come boldly because you said there is now no condemnation yes. to us who are in Christ Jesus. Yes. Father, we come thank you for saving us. Thank you for sanctifying us. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you for last night's sleep and slumber. Thank you for waking us up this morning clothed in our right mind. Thank you for this opportunity to stand before you and sing and praise and worship your holy divine name. Father, we thank you for all manner of income. We thank you for health and strength. We thank you for clothing, homes, Thank you for food, Father. Thank you for family. Thank you for our pastor and his family. Thank you, Father, for the way training, Father. Now we come asking for confessing our sins. Yeah, yeah. Asking forgiveness. You said if we confess our sins, you not only are you faithful, but you are just. You will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And we're standing on that promise, Father. Thank you for your peace. Thank you for your joy. Yes, Lord. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. Thank you for your long suffering, Father. Thank you for your patience. Thank you. We thank you, Father, for every good and perfect gift because all good things come from the Lord. Father, now we pray for the sick and the afflicted in our family. Pray for the local church and we pray for the universal church, Father, in your name. Father, we bless you this morning. We lift you up. We magnify you. Glorify you. We adore you. Love you and we bless you. Father, let the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts, let them be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer.
Mount Zion. I love you. I thank God for you. So thank you uh, for uh, the kindness that you have shared. This is clergy appreciation month, and I sure appreciate how you have loved on me. So thank God for, for you. Then I want to say, I, I need you to, I may miss this towards the end. I need to say while it's on my mind that I need you to vote. If you hadn't voted, I want you to vote, and I would love for you to vote early. I know you, a lot of us say I vote on the day in my precinct, uh, and I've been doing that for all my life. I just wish you would make an adjustment this year and go on and vote a little early. Uh, if I can get the acorn on Tuesday, I don't want to have to wait till Friday. You know, I go and get the acorn while I can. And so I encourage you to go on and do it because sometimes somebody else might get the acorn or you might not feel like it. The older I get, the more I realize that I'm not as strong as I used to be. I'm not. I'm not. I was telling my wife, I wasn't feeling, I wasn't feeling well this morning. But thank God for the opportunity to stay. For the Lord is my strength. I thank God for, for, for Jesus. So thank God for your prayers. So go vote. Go vote. Make sure you vote. And then I want you to know this week, on, we usually would have our uh, mobile food pantry on Wednesdays. This week it'll be on Friday. And so we need as many people to come and help. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't think I'm going to be here Friday uh, for the food pantry. Uh, I got to do some other things. Got to uh, have some tests done on Wednesday. And so I probably won't be here for the mobile food pantry on Friday. And so uh, I need y'all to step up and uh, do what Tampa Bay did last night in the World Series. It's not, don't give up, keep on going. And then when you get there, just celebrate at the end. Just pat on home plate. Amen. So thank God for uh, each of you. Please do those things. Amen. Father, we thank you now for your word. We pray that it will do what you have sought for it to do, even from the beginning. Your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Thank you for your word. Do it, Lord. Do what you do. We we'll give you the glory. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. The word of God is found today in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 23 and verse 24. And I will this morning be reading from the New King James Version for clarity. I like how it reads. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 23 and 24. Listen for the word of God. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful for me, but not all things edify. Let no one seek his own, but each one the other's well-being. I want to talk about this morning. Build me up. Don't tap me down. Build me up. Don't tear me down. It was said as a young boy that sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me.
like it's par for the course to personally attack somebody, whether in public or in private. Yeah. Right. We see it every day on the news. You, you can start with the White House and work all the way down to your house, and you will see that what we say hurts. And we need to be careful. We need to get to a place where we would build people up and not tap folk down. It happens so much, particularly not just in the White House, but in our house, because black folk have a, a serious disease when it comes to other black folk. I don't know what it is, Your Honor. It seems like some folk get to the place where they just hate themselves, and because they hate themselves, they hate on everybody else. Right. Right. Come on in here. I know I'm right about that. Because all you gotta do is say, I'm gonna hire a black contractor, and somebody'll start being negative about the contract. I ain't gonna have them Negroes work for me. I'm gonna get me some Mexicans, is what y'all say. Amen. Or better yet, I'm going to get me some other folk. Yeah, we start tearing down our own folk. We do it in our families when we start talking about you just like your dad. We try to make it seem like it's something negative that to be just like your dad or just like your mom. I'll never forget my own dad got mad at me one day and he looked at me with a scathing voice and pointed his finger at me. He said, you just like your mom. <laughs> I was smiling, little nigga. I said, thank you. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, we need to start focusing on building up people. One of the most beautiful words in scriptures, I mean, you got mercy and grace and all that, but a beautiful word in this text today is the word edify. See, to edify is to improve the mind and or character of a person. Did y'all hear that? Uh -huh. Edification comes from two Greek words. Let me do a little teaching here. Uh, one, one word you hear all the time is oikos, which is the Greek word for house, and the other is domeo, which is the Greek word to build. When you're talking about edification, it talks about building one's house. Building up one. And doing it with joy. It is the same root meaning we get from the term edifice. Now, Jesus knew much about building up things. Yes, he did. He was a carpenter's son who could build a house. He, he has a history of building things. He built the whole universe by just speaking a word. He did that. You read it in John. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Listen, all things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. Jesus understood what it means to build up somebody. His whole life was about building up people. His whole life was about building up places. His whole life was about building up things. This is what we ought to copy today. We need to stop copying some of this other stuff that's out here. But we need to copy what Jesus has done. We are about and need to be about building up other folk like Jesus did. I mean, this, this is the process for progress for Mount Zion Baptist Church in every church. Saints constantly edifying one another, building each other up, and, and, and doing it not only in this holy place, but also even at your house. When Jesus said, Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. What Jesus was referring to was not this brick and mortar that you see here. He was talking about building up the body of believers and, and, and to keep uplifting and edifying them. That's what Jesus 
So, firstly, he's saying to us that edification is not about you, but it's about somebody else. It's about others. See, saints, we must begin with the question, and I've said this to the Mount Zion family so often, how can I make you better? How can I make you better? See, see, seek to help someone else become better than where they are. Don't always be so selfish trying to be somebody, I got to get mine. You know, all that kind of stuff. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Why don't you seek to help somebody plant a seed of love and mercy and grace into somebody else? Plant a seed of hope into somebody else and not tie them down. Don't look at some little kid talking about you just a bad little, uh-uh. Ain't no such thing as bad kids. There's no such thing as bad parents and neglected kids. Somebody missed that in here. Yeah. Yeah. See, we so often uh, tear down and we got too many uh, demolition divas in the house of God. Yeah. 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 We, we, we tear down instead of building up. Our words become clothed in our understanding of what we uh, say. I mean, a lot of times, y'all, our words, uh, we, we, we can say the truth with bad intentions. Mm -hmm. I wish I had some help now. Yeah. And then we're covered and clothed by saying, I'm just telling the truth. Well, when you tell the truth with bad intentions, Your Honor, they call that slander in the court of law. That's slander. When you tell the truth with bad intentions. Yeah, somebody did something wrong, and everybody want to talk about everybody else's wrong. But they won't sweep around their own front door. Before they try to <laughs> sweep around. <laughs> Edification is not about you. It's about others. You got to seek to help somebody else. Ephesians 4 and 29 says, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good for the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. See, you can say what you want to. Freedom, however, must be married to responsibility. You can say what you want, but you're going to take responsibility for it. You can say anything you want, as a matter of fact, but it don't make it right. Amen. Edification is about helping somebody. But edification is not uh, what you say, but listen to me. Secondly, it is what you seek. See, building up the body of Christ is an intentional, deliberate act on one's behalf. And building up somebody else is an intentional act, a deliberate act that you must do. You have to consciously seek to help someone. Sometimes, sometimes I find myself, you know, falling into the same mob of, of joking uh, about other folk. I, I do. I, I, I apologize right now. Sometimes I might say something, you know, like it's a joke, and, and everybody else laughs except the person you talk about, and, and and you end up wounding someone, even though you might not really meant to do so, but you shouldn't have said what you said when you said it. You turn around and you harm a person. They, they remember, they, don't, they, they ain't laughing, and then if they do laugh, it ain't no real laugh. No, no, we, we think it's okay, but, but no pun intended, we thought, but, but we got to be mindful that we need to seek to build people up and not tie folk down. You know, we say little stuff like, look at him, <laughs> and all of a sudden that kind of stuff has on it negative connotations, and people are wounded. We might look at them and say, you think you shot today. <laughs> you know, we, we say these little things that we need to be careful about what we say because if somebody said it to you, you would be mad as a Mexican pepper and hot as could be. You got to be careful. Stop being so critical and start being more careful. 
children wept and ran out the door in the hallway. You know what I did? I said, I'm going to pray for your children. She said, do that. You got, you, got to, you got to sometimes check your own self in and make sure that you are doing what God has called you to do and not get to the place where you get caught up in position and not in the power and the persuasiveness of God to move you to another place. You ain't got the answer. You ain't got the answer to every situation. As smart as you are, as loving as you are, as holy as you are, you do not have the answer to every situation. Listen to them. Love on them. Learn from them. And then be what God will have you to be. But lastly, my brothers and sisters, if we're going to build people up and not tear them down, we need to know that it's all about wisdom. Uh, it's, excuse me. It is not about your wisdom, but it is about the word. It is not about your wisdom. It is about the word. See, when Paul visited Ephesus, he said these words to them. Listen. Or to Acts 20 and 32, he said, So now, brother, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up <laughs> and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. The word of God is the thing that will build you up. The word of God is a book that builds up people, when you feel torn down, go to the word of God. You can find strength in the word of God. You can find encouragement in the word of God. Everything you need is in the word of God. I ain't saying that you stop calling your friends. Amen. But what I'm saying to you is that the word of God has everything that you need. You have a Y'all ever seen, uh, I saw this on Wild Kingdom. You, and I've seen it in the skies, even around our city, watching. Have you ever seen geese or, yeah. or uh, uh, ducks and stuff like that when they fly, how they fly in what's called the V formation, the V yeah. formation? You ever seen that? Yeah. I, it's, it's, it's their V formation. They V, V, V formation for a reason. It is better than just flying randomly by themselves or in a straight line. You see, the flapping of the wings create an uplift of air, an effect that is increased at the rear of the V formation. Listen to me. That, that is one piece at the front of the V formation. And after a certain amount of time, he'll drop back and fly to the end of the formation. The weaker birds also remain close to the rear and on the inside where their work is decreased because the V formation help lifts them up. In this way, geese, ducks, they take care of each other. The stronger birds lead until the others can rotate to the front to take their places. Lord have mercy. I wish we could learn something from these. By cooperating and uplifting each other, every one of them gets to their destination. What are you saying, Pastor? What I'm saying to us is this. We got to do more edification of others and not tear folk down with our words, but to lift people up. Jesus was there and folk was tearing him down. You ain't the son of God. Your mama your mama had you and Joseph ain't even your dad. They talk bad about him. Who, who you say you are? You say you're the son of God. Uh -huh. You from Belzebub. Yeah, and they talk bad about him. They, they got to the place where they talk so bad about him that they will slap him and spit on him and put a crown of thorns on his head, crucify him on a Friday, and yet was talking bad about him if you be the son of God. Come down from the cross. Yet talking bad about him, but Jesus never spoke a mumbling word concerning that type of issue. He talked to God and said, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they're doing. And he dies there on Calvary's cross because he wants to build us out of the law and milk of our own sin. Lift us to a place where we will be with him 
Christ knew what it was about when it came to building. I guess that's why he was out of the sun. He knew how to build others up and not tear folk down. This message is for somebody. You need to hear that today because you're probably so used to tearing folk down that you think it's normal to have that type of conversation. You need to check that out and let no corrupt communication proceed out your mouth for that which is edifying to lift somebody up. And then when you lift others up, it automatically lifts you up. Father, we thank you now for your word. We pray now uh, that blessing upon your people that we may use our tongue that is set on fire, O oh God, by hell itself, that it will be changed, that we may set it on fire with hell. That our words may be words of help and hope, that we might lead to not our understanding, but to an understanding that you give us to reach somebody. Lord, let us be able to compliment people and not compliment. We'll give you the glory. Thank you for loving us so. Thank you for lifting us, lifting us, up us this day. We give you glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. The doors of God's house is open. There might be somebody here right now. You've been torn down by other folk. Things, people have said stuff they should not have said. And it, it, it may even be true, but, it, but they shouldn't have said it anyway. So now you, you've heard the word of God and you know now that you're not going to hit back and try to cuss them out and talk bad to them, but you're going to lift them up in the name of the Lord. And we lift you up right now in prayer. God can carry you through. The doors of this house is open. You may come by letter. You may come by Christian experience. You may come as a candidate for baptism. We just encourage you to come. Amen. Amen. Those of you who are watching, whether YouTube or Facebook, uh, we pray, oh God, that you would make a decision and stop worrying, stop worrying about what folks say. The Lord has already said that you are made good and very good, and you're His child, and we encourage you to come just like you are. Trust Him, trust Him, and watch what the Lord can do in your life. God bless you. God keep you. Amen. We pray, amen, that you would lean and depend on him. God bless you. God bless you. We have no none here. We may have some uh, on our media. Uh, God bless you. God bless you. Brother, you may be seated. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God for each of you. I, I felt a little weak when I stood up. I feel better now. Yeah. Amen. Thank God yeah. Yeah. for his strength. Amen. Love you. In the name of the Lord. Amen. 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 And then I want to do something. I don't know if Reverend Brandon called you. I want to do something uh, uh, next month. Uh, throughout the entire month of November, I want members, at least two members, uh, to be on our broadcast telling the world what they are thankful for. We got Thanksgiving coming up. Uh, I need some folk who will be willing to say what they are thankful for. And then we want to get them on video. I don't know if we're going to do it on Saturday. We're going to do it on that Sunday. I don't know. Uh, I just want to make sure that it is done. Amen. 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 I'm, all, I'm already assigning Brother Brandon, uh, Brother Jerry Brandon. I'm already assigning Brother Brandon to, to, to get the listing down. And y'all communicate it. So we'll know who it is who's going to share, whether we're going to record them pre-recording or uh, doing the worship service. Uh, we want to make sure that that occurs. God bless you. God keep you. Thank God for each of you. Now, I know whenever uh, Belinda Matre and the kids call and Sister Hughes and all them, that they got something special going on, so we want them to come now. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Come on.
this for you. I know that we are virtually closed, but we're virtually open as well, okay? Yeah, yeah. But uh, anyway, Pastor Winston, as we bring a close uh, to the Clergy Appreciation Month, we want to honor you by tying in the time. In Timothy 1, 5, 17, Paul began the concept of pastor appreciation when he stated that the elders of the church are worthy of double honor. This idea in Thessalonians 1, 5, 12, and 13 stamps the suggestion when he stated that those who work hard among you should be held in the highest regard for their work. And Jeremiah 3.15 held in the highest regard of the work. Jeremiah 3.15 sealed the order by saying, And I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. The first gift we have, Pastor, it is a money necktie. Would you come down? Oh, Did you know that the necktie is not only just an ad accessory, but it symbolizes humility, honor, and order? We want you to wear this necktie as, as royal status. You want your reign. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's a money necktie. Amen. Our second gift, which is an Apple Watch. This watch is a portable timepiece intended to be carried or worn and is designed to keep a consistent movement. Despite the motion caused by your activity, Pastor, you are very much like this watch. You are a masterpiece appointed by God to be the watchman of our souls. As a watchman over our souls, we know it gets rough, your battery gets low, time keeps changing like this global pandemic, and calls are never ending. But because of your faithfulness to this time, your dedication to the call and to the building of the king, we pray that you accept our tokens of love and continue to be faithful. Again, thank you for being faithful and an amazing pastor. The children and you would like to say happy Thursday month. Amen. Thank you. We would like the lady to win to come. Because of her, you are. You are catching that lady. Because of her, you are. We would like to present a token to you, Ms. Gwen, Lady Gwen Winston, from the children and the youth. Thank you all so much for being great leaders. Thank you. Love y'all. Amen. Amen. Now you can't wear my time.